Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I am Gene Morano. A two-part show today, Carrie T. McConnell is president of Roanoke-based Ridgeview Bank, which opens its first branch later this year in her hometown of Salem. And in the second segment, we'll talk about the unbanked and others seeking more help to understand financial institutions with Brandon McGinley, the financial stability specialist in the city of Roanoke's Department of Economic Development. And Carrie McConnell, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, let's talk about getting a new bank off the ground. You're the president, uh, gaining a toehold in a market where there seems to be plenty of banks. Uh, why the Roanoke Valley? Absolutely. Um, so we're actually backed by a bank out of Pennsylvania called CNB. Mm -hmm. They do a unique model where they do startup banks and other markets. Uh, this is their first one down south. They try to go into markets that are heavy in manufacturing. Um, that it perceived to be growing, which Roanoke finally is, and that ne really need a community-based bank. Uh, with the acquisition of Hometown Bank in late 2018, they felt like this was the right time. They actually scouted this market for two and a half, three years. So it, the timing couldn't have been better. We're the only bank headquartered in Roanoke, uh, community-based bank too. So we're really, really excited to be here and, and what we can get moving forward. And you said that they like to put banks in uh, places where there's a good manufacturing base? Absolutely. So does that mean you do a lot of commercial loans? And do, do, your, do your people see that there's growth coming in the manufacturing market in this market? Absolutely. Um, we're heavily focused on small business and commercial lending. That's our priority and the people of those businesses. So it's all-encompassing, but that's really our priority and what we focus on. We like to do a lot of commercial and industrial lending. A lot of banks say they want to do that, but we're actually doing it. That's a lot of operating companies, manufacturing companies. We also do commercial real estate. We also have a private banking division. So we're full suite of products, um, treasury services. You know, we can do anything the big banks can do, and we're already doing that. Mm -hmm. And do you think there's a, a, a draw being a hometown bank, being a local bank? For Absolutely. One of the uh, draws of us, I, I would say, would be we're local, local decision making, mm -hmm. quick turnaround time, speed to market. All of our employees are local, live in their communities, give back to our communities. Hmm. I'm wondering because you're so heavy on commercial and maybe working with maybe local businesses and local manufacturers, um, do, you, do you have people that really look at people's business plans to make sure that what they're doing make makes sense. Absolutely. We have ver uh, three very senior lenders now that we've hired and myself. Um, so technically four of us that are really experienced. We Our team together has over 100 years of experience in banking, uh, very commercial focused. Mm -hmm. So we're that is our forte and what we're used to doing. And we're looking forward to helping the community. So Ridgeview Bank, right now you've got a couple of loan offices, one in Roanoke, one at the, the lake. Uh, but but uh, are you making loans now? We are. We actually have a loan production office in downtown Roanoke, uh, a loan production office at Smith Mountain Lake. Mm -hmm. We have two lenders at Smith Mountain Lake and then two here. So we're, we've been doing loans since August, uh, late July, August, and we're doing very well. Mm -hmm. We already became profitable in November. Um, and to end the year, we actually ended double where we projected we were going to be. Is that pretty good for a new bank? Pretty good for a new bank. <laughs> okay. Not too bad. <laughs> you, know, you mentioned Smith Mountain Lake. Is, how's the business climate out there? Is it good? It's very good. Um, Smith Mountain Lake's become more of a year-round market, especially since COVID. More people are, that are relocating there are able to work from there. Uh, it's been We've been very well received down there. Hired two very senior, well-known lenders. Um, so they've really hit the ground running down there. So let's talk about how you got where you are now. Um, you know, we're, you were from Roanoke College. Uh, did you study banking or finance in Roanoke College? What was your thing? Sure, I was a finance, a business major with a, a concentration in finance at Roanoke College. I graduated from there. I didn't really have a job per se lined up. Went to Salem Bank and Trust, got a job in accounting there. Mm -hmm. um, we then got acquired by First National Bank. 
I got into a management training program that went two years, and then ultimately that, that landed me in commercial lending. I was very fortunate to be one of the first few employees of Hometown Bank when they started in early 06. Uh, and then we really built a bank from literally from scratch there, and I was able to do help, you know, be instrumental in helping with that. And then we got acquired in 2018. I stayed on with that company for a couple of years mm -hmm. until this opportunity presented itself. When you look at the how you got those opportunities, uh, uh, now that you're, you're the president of a, a new bank, uh, you feel kind of fortunate that you you got into a training program and not maybe not knowing where it's going to go, and boom, here you are. Absolutely, very fortunate to get in that two-year management training. Very fortunate to work with some of the best bankers in the Roanoke Valley. Um, just. It was a great opportunity for me, and I took it and, and ran with it. Um, and here we are today, and we haven't done anything yet, but we're looking forward to, you know, the next 10, 20 years here. I'm wondering, uh, you know, COVID's been the 800-pound gorilla the last two years. How has it affected the banking business, uh, as far from your viewpoint? Sure. Well, the first thing we had to deal with were the PPP loans. Um, that was I was still in commercial lending at my previous job for that. We worked many, many long hours, um, and then it really changed the, way, the dynamics of a branch system and the way people looked at banking in that they realized they didn't need to go into a branch. They could do a lot of things remotely, digitally, if we had the technology, which we did and we do now. Um, people, it saves them time for the most part. And then there's people that still want to come in the branch, and, and that's what our branches are for, too. So we really feel like we're full service in, in what businesses need. Right. Is it, almost an, is it almost a generational thing where maybe younger people, or is that a stereotype that younger people are more uh, comfortable with entering that transactions or over the, you know, over, over the computer transactions? I think very much a generational thing. Most kids in their 20s and 30s maybe have never stepped foot in a bank. Okay. It's all about the technology, and there are the banks, app. And there are banks that have no branches at all now. Exactly. And it's really changed. It used to be you had to fill in the dots on the branch system and connect. We don't really feel like we need to do that. So we'll have a branch in Salem, building a headquarters in Roanoke something at Smith Mountain Lake, but then we're looking to expand into other markets already. Okay, so you're gonna, you, you, the plan is you build more branches eventually in the area? We or will. The, offices? the plan is to do six to eight branches in the next five years and hire 60 to 70 people probably. Uh, all in this area? How far out do you envision going? Uh, really, there's no limit. We'll look at the market, what the market needs, if we can find the right people for those markets, and then we'll go, to, go mm -hmm. there. That's kind of our model, how we work. Okay, I want to talk about you being the face of the bank. <laughs> you're on TV, with the phone, you're in print ads, you're on radio, come see Carrie. Um, talk about that, what, what, what's that like? And when they told you this is how they wanted to help launch R Ridgeview Bank and put your face everywhere, what did you think? <laughs> well, it's certainly not my comfort level. Uh, I don't know whose it would be, but CNB, our, our uh, home bank in Pennsylvania, this is their model. They take the president and make them the face of the bank. So I kind of had a role with it, um, have a very good firm helping with that as well. But it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't my comfort zone, but it's become, I'm starting to realize it's what we needed to do. You know, I've been in this community over 20 years now. We know the small business community. We know the commercial banking community. Mm -hmm. And I've hired a very good team around me. So uh, the world, you know, is at our fingertips, I feel like now. Right. It's, I guess it's sort of a good model, too, especially without branches, that you can personalize a bank and maybe feel a connection to somebody, somebody that you seem, they seem like they're pretty nice. Absolutely. Um, as you know, I guess maybe we put my cell phone number on all of our advertising. It is my only number. Um, I answer it. I respond. People have been a little apprehensive that I actually respond pretty immediately if I don't answer the phone. Right. Um, that's been something that's given people a comfort level in a community where we don't actually have any branches. Mm -hmm. They know us, they see us, they can talk to us and get us on the phone at any time they want. So kind of a good bridge to when you do open a branch. Absolutely. And there are going to be people that are going to want to see something in the ground, right? a branch. Yes. We've been very fortunate what we've been able to do so far without anything tangible to show for it. It's really a testament of hiring the right people. Now we're getting into starting to build our branches, and I think that'll give people, the segment of people that aren't comfortable with us yet, that'll give them something tangible to look at. Mm -hmm. 
and um, they know we're actually committed to coming here. Right. You played basketball I at Roman College. <laughs> and uh, what position did you play? I played point guard. Point guard, okay. Point guard is sort of the, the captain of the team. So did, did, did those skills really, did they, did they transfer to the business world? Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the best things that's helped me in the business world is to play college sports. Um, it's very demanding on time. You learn time management. You learn how to work with people from all different aspects of life, teammates from all over the country, um, different backgrounds, different you know economic upbringings. Mm -hmm. And people, it's really as the point guard, you really have to quarterback the how people want the ball, how people act, how people respond to certain things. And it's very much, uh, you know, like that in the business world with, especially with our team of lenders and other employees, everyone's different. You have to learn how to manage those people, how they thrive under certain situations and certain ones need different things. And it's been really, really helpful for me to learn the time management and all of that. I did it. I, I was very fortunate at Renwick College to have that opportunity. You don't realize at the time what, right. what you're doing, but it's been, it's helped me much later, you know, in life. Did you have some of those crazy 6 a.m. practices with Coach Dunnigan? We had a lot of those 6 a.m. practices. I think in I went fact, to a couple of those. they were 5.30, um, three or four days a week. So that really taught you, you know, get your rest, time management. But it's, it's another discipline, you know, at Roanoke College, we had to actually go to class. You couldn't miss classes. You couldn't miss, you know, academics were more important than athletics. And so that really, really taught me how to handle everything coming at me. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I'm the best at it now, but you, you have a base to go off of. Mm -hmm. And no basket weaving courses or anything like no that? No basket weaving. It's a very demanding business program there. I'm wondering if you think there's enough young people that are interested carry in what you went to school for, finance and things like that. Now, is that something I don't know maybe you talk to kids about? That's the plan, um, and I, I do now, and the plan is in the future to really ramp that up. Uh, not a lot of the younger generation seems to be in, interested in banking as much as people used to be. Uh, really trying to change that perception of banking, showing what a great job you can have, be involved in the community, really, really help businesses thrive and make a difference in, in their companies. And that's going to be something that it's one of my focal points as we move forward, especially in the Renwick College business program. Right. And this is something we're going to talk about with our second guest today, but financial literacy, would it really help people, the average person, to know more about how banking works, about the services they can get? what type of loans they might be able to get, just uh, you know, what help they can get. Exactly. I don't think we focus on that enough, even at the high school level, college level. You know, you see all these pro athletes that don't know anything about banking. And go broke. But that's, that's really in the real world, too, with, with the average people getting average professions. You know, they don't know all the products we offer. They don't know how to handle some of the products. And they don't actually know what they need. And that's really what we want to help bridge the gap on, mm -hmm. is education. Right. Um, I'm just wondering, do people stop you on the street and say, hey, you're Carrie, that type of thing? <laughs> They've started to a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's definitely been interesting. Uh, they said that this is how it would pan out, and it, and it has. Um, but it, we're just, I'm just very fortunate to have a great team around me. Mm -hmm. I'm just one piece of what we're doing. Right. I'm just wondering if, when you got started in the banking business, did you aspire or envision being a bank president? I definitely didn't. Um, even in my hometown days and saw what Susan Steele had, had to do on a daily basis, it wasn't something I was interested in. This is a different opportunity. Uh, we've already have the money behind us, the capital. I don't have to worry about helping raise the capital. Mm -hmm. We have our infrastructure in place. You know, CNB has over 700 employees total. And so I'm able to just go out and do what I enjoy, which is talking to the businesses. I don't have to talk to the regulators um, and really, really just hit the ground running and doing what I enjoy the most. You feel like a point guard again? In a little Absolutely. Bit? Captain Absolutely. of the team? Absolutely. <laughs> Coach Dunnigan would be proud, huh? I think so. I hope so. And just to wrap up, looking forward to cutting some ribbons maybe this fall in Salem and in the future other places? Yes, our first full service branch in Salem will open in the fourth quarter, hopefully. Um, and then we'll, in the coming weeks, we'll announce where we're going to build our headquarters. It'll be in Roanoke City. That'll be a substantial building, um, su substantial commitment to the community. And then we're, we'll announce a third location in the coming weeks as well. And are already looking at a fourth location. 
Oh, Carrie uh, McConnell, we're going to have to leave it there. It's great to talk to you and uh, good luck with the bank and uh, good luck with Ridgeview. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm Gene Moreno. We'll be right back. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org. Welcome back to Business Matters. Brandon McGinley is the Financial Stability Specialist in the City of Roanoke's Department of Economic Development. We just had a banker on. You're involved with financial literacy, things like that. You are coordinate two programs, the Bank on Roanoke Valley and the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center. Let's start with uh, Bank on Roanoke Valley. This is a financial literacy, I guess, an initiative that started a couple years ago and I launched a few years ago. And I remember, I believe United Way of Roanoke Valley was involved somehow. Talk about Bank on Roanoke Valley. Absolutely. Thank you so much and thanks for having me. Bank on Roanoke Valley was actually formed in 2013, 2014. So it's almost a decade in the making. And it is a coalition of local government, community organizations like the United Way of Roanoke Valley and other partners and local financial institutions. And as a group, our main purpose is to try and help those who are unbanked and underbanked mm -hmm. in getting into safe, secure, affordable bank or credit union accounts. But also, like you said, to provide financial literacy education kind of in a classroom setting across the community. Mm -hmm. And there are other financial institutions that are involved with this, correct? That's correct. Okay. T talk about the target audience, uh, Brandon, for the, the unbanked and this underbanked program. Are, is it a particular demographic? Uh, how big a swath of the Roanoke Valley are, are really, really need more financial literacy and understanding? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I think as of 2017, almost 9% of Roanoke City households were unbanked. And nationally, it's about 5.4% or around 7 million households are unbanked currently. So uh, we're looking at all, um, you know, across the community, people remain unbanked and don't have that relationship with a bank or credit union yet. And so we really are trying to target those folks who are unbanked and who uh, might want to establish that type of relationship so that they can build over time a uh, relationship with an entity that could potentially help them get more affordable loans and essentially that bank account is that first step towards financial stability long term. So 9% locally uh, as of 2017? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, is it because they don't think they have enough money to put in a bank or they're just not comfortable with it? Uh, you know, for most people I think it seems foreign not to have a bank even if you don't have a lot of money in the bank. But is there some common thread, Brandon, as to why some of these people don't have a bank? Uh, that's a great question. Um, there are some reasons that households or individuals remain unbanked. Some of those might be that individuals think that the fees are too high at the bank account or that they won't be able to maintain like a minimum monthly balance, that sort of thing. Another reason might be that um, there are some rules and regulations about kinds of identity you need to open a bank or credit union account. And some folks um, just don't have access to those types of identification forms, and that can be a barrier as well. Um, and so there's a variety of pe reasons why folks might s remain unbanked, mm -hmm. but a big part of what Bank on Roanoke Valley does and the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center is provide that uh, level of coaching to really help folks understand what bank accounts really entail and how they can be safe, secure, and affordable to them. So what are these people doing with their money? Are they stuffing it under the mattress or, or they're just spending it as they bring it in? Or uh, So I would say that some folks who are unbanked will use check cashing, for example, um, and incur those fees. And so that's another reason why uh, it's important that folks who uh, are unbanked become banked is because um, it's been estimated that over the course of a lifetime, folks will spend up to $40,000 on fees and other unnecessary costs through payday lenders and that sort of thing or alternative uh, financial instruments. And so um, through Bank on Roanoke Valley, we really want to encourage folks and help them understand that while it might be convenient now, over the long term, you will incur additional costs if you remain unbanked. Wow, for up to forty thousand dollars, and yeah, or five percent of net income. It's been well, estimated. Yeah. Wow. So okay, so talk about the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center. Is that actually a, a city office? 
Uh, so the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center is, provides no-cost one-on-one financial counseling as a public service through the City of Roanoke in partnership with Freedom First Enterprises. And essentially, Bank on Roanoke Valley was providing and continues to provide this, uh, these classroom style literacy sessions um, throughout the year, uh, but there was a need in the community for more private one-on-one -on -one ongoing financial counseling with an expert. And so the city of Roanoke applied for a grant to uh, lift up and to start a financial empowerment center here. And it actually became the 20th financial empowerment center across the country to provide the, the same service, which is this private one-on-one -on -one financial counseling. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it, is it fairly unique? And I guess there's only 20 of them. That is pretty unique. Yeah, I think there's 25 by now, if I have my numbers right. So the, the entity that funds the grant is an entity out of New York called the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund. And they have now financial empowerment centers across the country that they support. Uh, Roanoke is lucky to have be one of those uh, municipalities. So how are you reaching out to citizens of people in Roanoke, the Roanoke Valley, about the Empowerment Center? I know you've done some webinars, things like that, but are people finding you? Are they finding the Empowerment Center? Are they, and are they asking questions? Uh, they are. So the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center launched in the summer of 2020. And I should note that um, it wouldn't have its success without our partners across the community. And so even before the Financial Empowerment Center launched, we were working, or I should say staff at the city, staff at Freedom First Enterprises, were working with a number of community partners to um, try and uh, figure out how best to have a financial empowerment center in the city. And so uh, we are, got, I think we have over 20 community partners that make referrals into the Financial Empowerment Center, which is a long-winded way of trying to answer right. how folks are coming to the Financial Empowerment Center. So our main asset is our partners. And, um, and, and in addition to that, we have done advertising, marketing around the community. You might see Financial Empowerment Center um, uh, uh, on buses in the community. Um, you might see myself on uh, the occasional television program and that sort of thing. Um, and, and so we're, we try to do our best to have a number of outreach events, activities, advertising, and continue to work closely with our community partners because a lot of the partners in the, in the Roanoke Valley that we work with are serving people who could really use that level of financial counseling that the center provides and so that they can get on a path to financial stability. So what's it like uh, maybe when, um, when the light bulb goes off, Brandon, when somebody, oh, I get it. I, I, does, did, you have those light bulb moments where they, you know, um, so I don't do the financial counseling myself. Right. So I mean, I, I what do you hear from the people that do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would say that um, some of the feedback I've received from folks who have participated in the in the bank on Roanoke Valley uh, classes that um, I've coordinated in partnership with our financial institution partners. Um, you know, I, I've had people stop me on the street and say, "Thank you again for providing that." You know, that that classroom. You know, me and my family. I came into it hoping to improve my credit, and we've, our credit score has stayed up, and so that's always wonderful to hear. Um, and similarly, some of the testimonials that the uh, clients who have uh, received financial counseling have provided have really touched on all types of things from counselors helping them get set up with a car loan, for example, or also helping them to access another public support program in the community that they weren't even aware of. And also um, just general things like, uh, you know, uh, helping me to better understand how to budget and that sort right. of thing. So. It seems like you have, if you're really wired into the system, you got more skin in the game. You're really just wired in more. Do you understand more about loans and how to get loans and, and yeah. how to save for college, things like that? Yeah, I mean, it definitely uh, Having that bank account or credit union account is, is that first step towards greater fi financial stability. And it also leads to people being able to save more. Um, it leads to people being able to learn certain techniques towards saving, like saving automatically. Perhaps you get a portion of your paycheck direct deposited into a savings account, which you couldn't do if you didn't have a traditional banking relationship. Um, and the counselors will help folks with techniques to save, like the concept of saving yourself first. Like take $50 of your check every two weeks mm -hmm. and consider that a bill, but really it's a bill for your savings if that makes sense. Pay yourself first and then 
also you know, pay your other bills as well. Considering savings like a utility bill can help you on your way to building up that savings account over time. And really that's good advice for anybody. That's right, yeah, because yeah. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, but if they consider I need to put $50 away. Exactly. In the, it's a bill, but I'm paying it to myself. It's exactly. Pay off in the long run. Exactly. And to note, the Roanoke Financial Empowerment Center and Bank on Roanoke Valley and its services are open to anybody. There is no qualification that you need to meet in order to receive financial counseling, for example. Okay, so you don't have to be unbanked or under no not at all you, you you know whatever your particular financial situation is whatever you your financial journey might be or your goals are talk to a counselor because they can help you to get there and I think there's probably a lot of adults even people that are in banks that they maybe they feel kind of funny about asking for information about maybe something people they, they thought they should have known 20 years ago or so Yes, that may be true. You know, the, de definitely personal finances are sensitive and they're, they're, they're private. And that's why uh, I think our community is fortunate to have its financial empowerment center and provide that one-on-one -on -one private financial counseling sessions because the classroom setting has a lot of value and a lot to provide. But some folks might not want to get into all their personal individual situations in that type of setting. And so they meet a counselor, they build that rapport, they talk about their financial goals and the counselors will help them to get there in whatever ways they can through their training and expertise. But ultimately, it is that person's own financial empowerment journey. Real quickly, how do people find out more information? Oh, great question. So um, I would say co contact me directly if they would like to. Uh, they can call me and my number is 540-853-1120. Both on the city website? Uh, yes, I would be on the uh, city's on the uh, economic development department's website. Uh, but secondly, I would also say to set up a financial counseling uh, appointment with the Roanoke FEC. They can go to RoanokeFEC.org. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Brandon McGinley is a financial stability specialist with the city of Roanoke. And Brandon, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much. I really appreciated the opportunity. I'm Gene Moreno. Thanks for joining us.